This patient education video was produced by the Toronto Video Atlas of Liver, Pancreas, and Transplant Surgery. The number of patients who need a life-saving liver transplant is much higher than the number of organs that are available for transplantation. Patients end up being placed on a waiting list for months or even years. Even after being placed on the waiting list for a liver transplant, patients die before an organ is found. In Toronto, one patient out of every four patients placed on the liver transplant waiting list dies before an organ becomes available. By donating part of your liver, you can save a life. This video will talk about how you can donate a piece of your liver to help other patients with liver failure. You will learn why the liver is important, how to become a living donor. A living liver donor is a person who donates a piece of their liver for transplantation. What happens during the donor surgery? What the possible risks and complications are? And what will happen after surgery? What does the liver do? The liver takes care of many vital functions in the body, including making bile to break down food, filtering toxins from the blood, making hormones, and fighting infections. Although it can take a lot of damage before failing, once a certain amount of damage is reached, the liver will stop working properly, and end-stage liver failure begins. At this point, only a liver transplant can save the patient's life. Important parts of the liver. The liver needs blood to survive. Blood enters the liver in two ways. The arterial blood supply is oxygen-rich blood from the common hepatic artery originating from the heart. A separate blood supply comes from the portal vein, which is less oxygenated but high in nutrients collected from the digestive system. After supplying the liver with oxygen and nutrients, blood is drained away from the liver through the hepatic veins. The liver is the only solid organ in the body that will grow back after a piece is removed, making it ideal for transplantation. For example, if you donate a piece of your liver to a patient whose liver has failed, your liver will grow back. This is also true for the patient who receives a donated piece of liver. When a piece of your liver is donated to someone else, that piece will grow and begin to work. How do I become a living donor? To become a living donor, you must be in overall good health, be between 16 to 60 years of age, have a blood group type that can be matched with a recipient. A recipient is the patient who will get a piece of your liver. Have a near normal body weight. Have a healthy liver with anatomy that offers the best chance of a successful transplant surgery. This will be found out during your donation workup. To make sure you are safe during the donation surgery, some tests will be done. A medical and social history questionnaire, blood type testing, blood work, a chest x-ray, CT scan, or MRI. Depending on the results of the above tests, you may also have to have a liver biopsy, further tests of your heart or lungs, or change your diet. During this time, you will meet with your transplant surgeon and other members of the healthcare team. During the donation process, your health is very important. If at any time your healthcare team feels it is unsafe for you to continue, we will stop the donation process. If this happens, you should not be upset. Out of every four people wishing to donate a piece of their liver, only one is accepted as a possible live donor. You yourself can also stop the donation process at any time. What happens before surgery? You will be admitted to the hospital on the morning of the surgery. Do not eat or drink after midnight on the night before your surgery. Once in the operating room, you will be placed on an operating table and given anesthesia to put you to sleep for the surgery. During the surgery, several tubes will be inserted into your body for monitoring, giving medications, and removing fluids. These include 
an intravenous line, an arterial line, and a central venous catheter. A nasogastric tube will be placed through your nose into your stomach, and a catheter will be placed into your bladder to drain urine. These tubes will remain in place for a few days after your surgery. What happens during surgery? A right hepatectomy is the removal of the right part of the liver. Up to two-thirds of your liver is removed along with your gallbladder. The right hepatectomy surgery usually takes five to eight hours to complete. One of two incisions will be made, below your right rib cage or straight down the middle of your abdomen. Your abdominal anatomy is then checked to make sure that the transplant will be successful. If nothing is found, your surgeon will go ahead with the surgery. However, there is a small chance during the check of your abdomen that your surgeon will find something that may put your safety at risk. In this case, your surgery will be stopped. Due to the rigorous pre-screening process at the University Health Network, in our program this happens less than 3% of the time. The living donor right hepatectomy surgery involves the following steps. On the underside of your liver, your gallbladder is removed to be able to assess the liver blood supply and bile ducts. This is a common procedure, and the removal of your gallbladder will not affect your quality of life after surgery. A cholangiogram will be done. This helps your surgeon look at your bile ducts to make sure that it is safe to proceed. Your liver is then divided until the two portions of your liver are held together only by the ducts and blood vessels. Your right bile duct is divided, followed by your blood vessels, the right hepatic artery, right portal vein, and right hepatic vein. This leaves what we now call the liver donor graft. The liver donor graft is then removed from your body. Another cholangiogram is done to make sure your remaining bile ducts have not been injured. Your incision is closed. Once the liver donor graft is removed, it is quickly cooled on ice and flushed with preservation fluid. It is placed in the recipient patient as soon as possible during a separate surgery. The recipient surgery is done on the same day in a separate operating room. What happens to my liver after surgery? After the liver donor graft is removed, your remaining liver will expand and will grow back to its normal size in about 6 to 10 weeks. At this point, your liver should be working normally. Are there risks to donating my liver? As with any surgery, there are risks involved. About 5 patients out of a group of 100 may experience temporary bleeding and a need for a blood transfusion. About 5 patients out of a group of 100 may experience a blood clot in the legs or lungs. About 2 patients out of a group of 400 may experience bile duct injury. Though very rare, there are donors outside of UHN who have gone on to need liver transplantation themselves as a result of donating a part of their liver. While no one has died while donating a piece of their liver at UHN, the worldwide risk of death due to the donation procedure has been one patient out of a group of 1,000 patients. Other short-term complications may include nausea and vomiting, pain lasting longer than normal, depression, especially if the patient who received your liver does not do well, problems with your heart or lungs, for example pneumonia, bile leak requiring a drain or an endoscopic surgery to repair, this happens to about one patient out of a group of 100 patients. Your liver may briefly not function as well as it did before your surgery. This is a temporary complication, resulting in jaundice, which is yellowing of the eyes and skin, and swelling. This happens to about two patients out of a group of 100 patients. What will happen after surgery? 
What should I know about my recovery at home? After your donor right hepatectomy surgery, you will be cared for by a team of health specialists who will watch your progress and help to make sure you have a quick recovery. Tubes that were inserted during the surgery, nasogastric, intravenous, bladder catheter, will be removed during the first few days of recovery. To manage any pain after your surgery, you can use a patient-controlled analgesia pump with or without a transversus abdominis plane, or TAP, regional anesthesia block. You will get oral pain medication to use at home. While in hospital and before you go home, talk to your surgeon, nurse, pharmacist, or a member of our acute pain service team about managing your pain. Daily walks and light exercise are an important part of your recovery, which can help you avoid blood clots. To reduce the chance of blood clots forming in your legs, you will also be given a daily injection of a blood thinner, or anticoagulant, during your hospital stay and for five weeks after being discharged from the hospital. When will I go home? Most liver donors are discharged from the hospital five to seven days after the surgery for home recovery of about six to eight weeks. After this time, you may return to work if it does not require heavy lifting or strenuous exercise. It will take around three to four months for you to fully recover. When should I come back for a follow-up appointment? You will meet with your transplant surgeon about one month after your surgery to go over how you are doing. At this time, your surgeon will talk with you about the need for additional follow-up appointments. What can I eat? After the surgery, eat a normal healthy diet. Try to eat foods that are low in fat and high in fiber such as fresh fruits and vegetables as well as foods rich in protein, such as good quality meat and fish. Avoid alcohol for 8 to 12 weeks after your surgery. There is usually no need to change your diet as a result of your gallbladder being removed. Most complications are seen soon after surgery while you are in the hospital, but some may happen after you are discharged from the hospital. Once you get home, you must call your surgical team if you have any of the following signs or symptoms. Fever over 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Increasing redness or swelling around the incision. Yellow skin or eyes. Shortness of breath. Or uncontrolled pain. If you have any of these signs or symptoms, you should call your donor transplant team or go to the nearest emergency room. Liver donation can be a long and challenging process, but the rewards are great. You have the opportunity to improve a patient's quality of life, providing them with a better future. Our team of health specialists is highly trained and will be there to guide you along the way. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit the Multi-Organ Transplant Program website at the URL shown above, which is also linked on this webpage, or call your doctor.